Hey guys, this is Hell Hades. This is another raid Shadow Legends video. So guys, we're going to be picking on one of the most underrated epics in the game, um, and we're going to be showing him off in a load of different areas. This is actually a redemption from my Twitch. So someone on my Twitch has redeemed channel points to get this guide done. Um, he's been sitting in like the top 25 champions in the epics for my tier list for a long time. I don't know how he's got away without having a guide done yet, but today is his day. So we're going to be doing Light Sworn. Now, Light Sworn is... I'd say pretty damn underrated, and there's a couple of reasons why. The first main reason is he's got this A2, uh, which places decrease attack, big version, and a decrease speed on a three-turn cooldown. Now, I didn't have Tyrell for a long, long time in this game. I didn't have an effective decrease attack champion for Clan Boss for a long time in this game, and Light Sworn was my decrease attack champion. And you're probably thinking... Well, hold on a minute, it only goes on for two turns and it's on a three turn cooldown. So there's going to be a period of time where the clan boss doesn't have decreased attack on and that's risky. It is until you realize that the slam on his third hit from the clan boss doesn't scale from attack. It's game changer. That knowledge right there that I've just given you is game changing knowledge for this champion. Because what it means is you can place your decreased attack. It goes on for two turns. Both AoE hits land with decreased attack on. And then when the slam comes in where there's no decreased attack, it doesn't matter because it doesn't scale from attack. So this guy can be your decreased attack champion for clan boss. No problem at all. And he actually places decreased attack. Decreased speed won't go on. He actually places decreased attack, which means it will go on 100% of the time if you've got enough accuracy. So he's actually one of the best decrease attack champions in the game. The only risk with this guy is if your debuff bar can fill up before he gets his decrease attack on. That's your only risk. So we're going to be bringing Light Sworn in. I'll build him up for Clan Boss. Um, he's also got a decreased turn meter on his A1. Attacks one enemy three times. Decreases the target's turn meter by 10%. That's pretty good for stuff like Finite. pretty good for a Spider. And then he's got an increased defense and a revive on death uh, on all allies for, for two turns. Again, this, this works really nicely for Spider, Fire Knights, um, Clan Boss if you can scale it up properly. Um, so all in all, he's got a very, very nice kit for, I'd say, three areas of the game. And if you want to throw Faction Wars in there as well, four areas of the game. Uh, he's not really an arena champion. Um, he's not really a dragon runner because of his single target damage all the time. Uh, and I probably wouldn't really use him on Ice Golem, although you can use him on Ice Golem. So in terms of Mastery Zen, this is how I've had mine set up literally since day one. If you are trying to run a, in fact, I'll, I'll switch this up. This is what I was running. Um, let me just get myself out of the way. This is what I've been running ever since I built him. I'm just gonna switch this up because I'm going to be pushing him to be a, um, Basically, I'm going to be making him go on a on an even kill with the clan boss, so that he always gets that three turns up um, or two turns up on the on the two turns that I need it for that decrease attack. So the first sort of setup was right, but instead of coming on the support tree, uh, you'd only take support tree, I guess, if you're trying to run him for clan boss and you're running short of accuracy. Or if he's mainly going to be in your spider and finite teams, uh, Evil Eye is a really good mastery to take. Maybe I'll take it just so I can show you that. But ultimately, if I was running him just for clan boss, uh, decrease attack and go on for an extra turn here. I don't need this one, so I might as well take this one. Um, if I was running him outside of clan boss, like specifically, I'd take here, 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 here. I'm now in the way again. <laughs> One, two, three, resurgent, four, delay death, five, retribution, six, deterrence. That's what I'd be taking if I didn't want to show you him in other content today. Okay, so I'm going to build mine out now um, for my clan boss team, and then we'll get him, we'll get him into some content. So this is what I've done then. I've put him in two-piece defense, two-piece speed. Really what I'm looking for is uh, over 190 speed. We're going to Ultra Nightmare here. 
uh, high defense, high crit rate, high crit damage, high accuracy. If you're building them and you've just got average gear, just forget the crit rate. So stay high defense, stay the right speed, get to the right accuracy. Uh, crit rate and crit damage come as like an afterthought because he's mainly in there to land his decrease attack. But he does do a bit of damage as well. So why not show what he can do? We're going to pair him up then with a couple of memes. So Mr. Meme, Drockle, uh, Mr. Meme, Gurp Tuck. Um, so those two are going to come in for the for the lols. And then we're going to also throw in Razin as a, like a free-to-play fusion option. Uh, well geared. And we're going to throw in uh, Mr. Freebie Grush as well, wherever he is, um, who's well geared as well. So basically got like a team of support stroke tanks um, coming in. Ultra Nightmare Clan Boss. So what we got? Nothing worthwhile. What do we get this time? Shards. That's not too bad. Terrible. Okay. So let's let's try this out. Get rid of my normal team. So we have got the meme dream coming on. Razin's probably the only one who's not a meme out of these lot. Um, but we can still do some work here. I'm pretty sure we can still get some work done with these guys. So Light Sworn in, Grush in, and then Gurp Tuck. Do we have any auras? So he's got an aura that works everywhere. Okay, cool. So I've basically got him speed tuned so that he's going to be having his decrease attack up. I could do it full auto from the start. He'll have his decrease attack up from the start. I just, I'm not sure if on full auto he does that move or not. So I would just start with placing your decrease attack straight away. You don't want to, um, let's just go A1 here. Yeah, you don't want to mess up the opportunity. So we get our poisons out with Gurp Tuck. We get a decrease attack off here. On it goes, decrease attack. Decrease defense and weaken. I've got no poison in this setup. And then I hit auto. So you'll see, I mean, it placed. We got the slam against us. He then wants to place his decrease, uh, increased defense and revive. So the clan boss is now onto his, his uh, slam turn. This does not scale off of attack. So it does not matter that decrease attack is not on. Slam comes in. The damage would have been the same whether he put that out there or not. Decrease attack goes back on, and then we're back into the cycle. So because of that, he's actually crazy good, like totally underrated in this comp or in, in this style of fight. And you see there he's hitting for 29, 30-odd K per hit on a three-hit A1. So he does work as well. He does damage. Um, and then he'll cycle through his increased defense and revive. The only thing which I'm worried about here as we're playing it through, and we'll see, is whether on auto he decides to do increased defense and revive on death when he's actually meant to be slamming people in the face with his decrease attack. So we'll see how that comes through. You'll also see his decrease attack move hits hard. So 30k a pop, nice. Decrease attack wears off, that's fine. We don't even care about it at this point. Goes in with his A1. Slam comes off. That's the same as it would have been. Now, this is where we want him to do decrease attack. And we'll see if he does the right move or not. He doesn't. Okay, so that's a watch out. Um, I'll play this through. It does mean that we're going to take a slam out of place. So it, I'll just check something once we've once we finish the run. It might be that I've reduced the cooldown to make that possible. We'll see. But... um. That's disappointing because you actually want him to do his decrease attack as his primary move all the time. Otherwise, he runs out of sync. But I guess if you're, I mean, I used to manual with him, which is why he was so effective for me. If you are manualing with him, he will never do that wrong, ever. Uh, but it's disappointing to see that he does it on auto in the wrong order. But it goes on there again. So we've come back around to the right cycle. Um, I used to use him actually for a long time just as my like secondary decrease attack champion, but absolutely can be the primary one. So I'm going to let this play through and, um, and see where we get to. Perhaps I shouldn't have gone with such a meme team because actually we got wrecked. Um, 
What I'll do is I've got to rerun this with a proper team and you can see what sort of damage we do properly. But 2.2 million. He's keeping up with a Razin that's got, you know, crazy damage and Grush, who's also got good damage. I'm going to swap out Moss Beard and Druckle now. Uh, I, was, I was trying to showcase something which might be good. It's not. It's still horrendous. Um, let's just go back in with like a standard setup. Okay, take two with a proper team then. So Bad Elves going to cleanse, poisons, decrease defense and weaken, decrease attack. Uh... And life steal. So we should be able to get a bit further into this fight. Let's just set this up again. Leech on first. Get my poisons up. Get my decrease attack on. Poison sensitivity. And then decrease defense and weaken. So I don't have a counter attack in here. I don't have an ally attack. Both of those things would make my um, damage much higher. But you'll see in this comp how much damage we can actually do with a proper setup so i'll play this through to the end you'll see the damage and then we'll get him in some other content so here we go i'm just going to bring this back in what we now turn 24 so 24 we are taking a ton of damage at this point uh actually yeah we just died 14 mil on a team with no counter attack no ally attack um, and basically Light Swarm keeping up that decrease attack for the whole time. So I am having to like jump in a manual at times to make sure that he does it in the right way. Um, but if he's the only one you've got and you're struggling to get onto kind of end game content, he's basically the guy for you. Up until Nightmare Clan Boss, he is an absolute godsend. So um, the other thing I just wanted to check actually is where I've booked him. Can I make it fully auto with this ability so that would be a five no it's still it would still go out of sync so one way or another if you're going to use him as your decrease attack you will have to uh jump in and do manual at times um otherwise he is going to throw you out of sync but very good champion to do it if you're struggling for that decrease attack champion better than like the, the coffin smashers and those sort of guys but you do just need a bit of manual intervention so let's go on and show him in his two best dungeons as well so spiders is is one of the ones a lot of people say to me, you know, if you don't have a miscreated monster, how do you deal with, um, like, support play? And Light Sworn, for me, was one of those support players um, for quite a while in my setup. So here's an idea of the type of team you could run. Um, like, speed, drop turn meter, drop defense, increase defense, drop, uh, decrease speed, and uh, decrease turn meter, and then HP burn to do the killing. You do need to click on the spider with this sort of comp to run it on auto. But this is pretty similar to the first ever comp that I ran to ever kill the spider. So if we've got a decreased defense off there, which we're pretty unlucky not to have got, I think it's like a 5% chance to not land that, then we would have done a ton more damage on, um, on that Heartseeker. But you see the burns go out. Light Swan is my tank. Got loads of defense. Got increased defense up as well. He's also got a revive on death, so he kind of just tanks stuff up for long enough for these burns to do a ton of work. And then really what you're doing is you're tanking for long enough so that heart seekers go off. Um, again, we didn't get decreased defense on the boss. A bit weird. Um, you're tanking for long enough to get a second heart seeker. You're tanking for long enough to get uh, a second round of HP burns, basically. So see how long he's, tank he's tanked up for there. Like a, a full minute worth of tanking is a load of time. We do have our second heart seeker here, I think. Yeah. So imagine if we'd actually got decreased defense on the boss. This is already done. This job is already done for us. HP burn goes out again. We only actually got it on a couple. Hallelujah, we've got a decreased defense on. And this is like... Almost, I'm showing you the worst case scenario for how this run could have gone. Which sometimes it's nice to show you that. Um, but basically, Light Sworn is bringing increased defense. He's bringing uh, decreased attack, decreased speed. He's bringing turn meter reduction on an A1. So there's, there's a whole ton of stuff that he's bringing into this fight. And obviously, in terms of damage, the HP burn is, is the MVP for damage going to be really close in the end we got it okay so a couple of minute run uh, and that's honestly that's like the worst case scenario that run could have done but light swan doesn't do a lot of damage but he tanks up a ton of damage so really good in that role 
and then for fire knights kind of similar really um you know in terms of getting through waves and stuff like that it's not anything special but when you get to the boss he can do a bit of work for you triple hit a1 means you're going to break through that shield nice and quickly hopefully we can slam these people pretty hard and get through them so see that 71k on his um on his a2 there lots of damage from his a2 onto the nasty wave here still like triple hit uh, 10k a hit pretty nice same again 10k a hit that's before we get things like increased defense on himself sit people down cupidus that's the way and the things like revive on death now revive on death is the worst type of defensive um, st um buff i'd say just because it's so unreliable but every now and again it just comes out trumps so what we'll find here if we get this going is just a triple hit a1 to break through that shield drops turn meter as well on his a1 which on fire knight is brilliant just gives you that breathing room if you can get through the shield and from this point now we should be um absolutely good another drop turn meter there 10 percent then obviously cold hearts do all the work i don't love the way he always throws it up whenever it's available i guess at some point it's good but it's not always good here comes the decrease speed which again is very nice and that's going to be job done so three areas of the game which i'd say is, is absolutely top draw on um and he's been running in my faction war team uh it's not up today he's been running in my faction war team pretty much since day dot since faction wars came out he's been in the team so really really useful um epic void void champion um absolutely top notch if you pull him early in the game like I'd, I'd say the further you get through the game the further he falls out of your meta but if you get him fairly early in the game he will be absolutely in like three or four of your teams um hope you enjoyed the video guys i've been hell hades i'll catch you later